I know that if I put down my walls, there's the potential that you're going to come in and make me hurt. Hello, my dearest, dearest friends, and welcome back to the Strong Stoic Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Tumblin, and I don't want you to be naive, man. I don't want you to be naive at all. Um, don't you just love it when people say that to you? Don't be naive. Come on, man. What are you doing? Um, it's <laughs> It always makes me kind of giggle just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, so what they are essentially saying when they say that, don't be naive, is like, grow up, Right? Let's just say it for what it is. What they mean is grow up. And like that's really helpful, right? Yeah, just grow up. Just grow up. Don't be naive, man. Uh, The world isn't a nice place. People are evil. Come on. Don't be naive. People are going to hurt you. Now, I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I mean, come on. I talk about history all the time and I talk about the horrible things that people do to each other all the time and how really you should make sure you don't become that person. Um, So I'm not disagreeing with the fact that people are sometimes evil and that the world uh, is sometimes not a nice place. It is what it is in a sense. Um, But the question is, should you be naive? Or should you not be naive? It's a bit of a complicated question, isn't it? Is there a place at all for naivety? If you are not naive, does that mean that you're just bitter about life? You know, like if you say... You know, don't be naive. Come on. The world isn't a nice place. People are evil. Does that mean that you're just bitter and resentful? It's kind of a conundrum, isn't it? So this is going to be the topic for today. And I want to start with uh, basically the topic of childhood innocence, because this is really where we all start from, right? Um, You know, how we all wish we could go back sometimes, right, to childhood innocence before really consciousness, before responsibility and et cetera. Um, But basically when we're young, we're innocent, right? And the reason we're innocent is not because we're like these pure beings. It's it's simply because we haven't had the opportunity to do anything truly malicious. We haven't had the chance to do anything bad. And because we haven't really done anything bad, uh, we're innocent. Uh, And we also... As a child, we don't appreciate our own mortality. We don't know we're going to die, or maybe we do know we're going to die, but we don't really appreciate it or understand what that means. And some people, they don't really appreciate it until they're like 45, which is a bloody shame. Um, but we also don't know about good and evil. That's interesting, isn't it? As, as we're, When we're children, we don't really understand what good and evil are. And that kind of ties in, I mean, that's really what consciousness is, the knowledge of good and evil. Um, you could also say that consciousness is being aware of our own vulnerability, which it really is in a sense. Consciousness is like, uh, I know I am mortal, therefore I know I am going to die, therefore I know I am vulnerable. In the same way, consciousness is, I know what good and evil is, I have the knowledge of good and evil, and because I have the knowledge of good and evil, I know that people can do evil unto me, and I can do evil unto other people. And that's really the, you know, there's the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible, which is basically, you know, they become conscious and all of a sudden they realize that they were naked. I mean, that's like, like if you were to define the awakening of one's conscious as consciousness as a kid, like that's it. You realize that you're naked and you're exposed and then, you, and really that you're vulnerable. Um, and that's really what it means. So normally it happens that when we start out, we're young and we're innocent and, you know, there's a certain point in our lives where someone hurts us. Now, this could be by accident. This could be intentional. Um, If it's by accident, that sucks. But if it's intentional, if someone's actually meaning to harm us, meaning they are actually being malicious, uh, that that's like that's worse. That's even worse. So it could be that that person was just malicious uh, or sorry, it could be that that just that person was just making a mistake or could mean that they're actually being a dick and they're trying to actually harm you. Uh, and so you know, as an adult, we know this, right? We know that there's people who intentionally mean harm. We know there's people that, you know, are going, well, there's people that may hurt you on purpose, essentially. We're not naive in that sense. You know, as an adult, you know that if you leave your car window open in a big city, you know, there's a decent chance that someone's going to steal it or at least steal something inside of the car. 
We know that if we go down a sketchy dark alley, there's a chance of being mugged. Now, when you know that as an adult, really what you're saying to yourself is, okay, I know I'm vulnerable and I know that there is someone out there that will intentionally harm me, whether or not for the good for good reasons or bad reasons. Maybe they need the money and they're stealing and to feed their children. Doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is someone is intentionally doing you harm. It's not by mistake. And we also know that, you know, when we get in a relationship or have a friendship as as a as an adult, we know that there's this chance of being betrayed, of being hurt by that person. Uh, and and this is really like what consciousness is. It's it's awareness of our own vulnerability. It's the loss of innocence. You could also think about it like that. Um, and so that there's that time in our lives when we learn about that. That time there's a time when we realize that we are vulnerable. That's where we lose our innocence. Now, as a child, uh, you don't have that. As an adult, you do. And so clearly there's a transition there, right? Clearly, like you have to transition from being, let's say, quote, quote, unconscious into being conscious, aware of your vulnerability. Um, and, you know, often it happens in our teenage years because, I mean, teenage years are literally the transition between child to adult. You know, they have all these emotions going on and they got these hormones and then they're, you know, they're expected to take on more responsibility at work and, and not at work, but at school. Maybe they're expected to get a job. They're expected to help out more around the house. And so the the the, uh, the parents, if they're worth their salt, they're going to try and prepare the child for adulthood. And in doing so, you don't just say, okay, get out of the house tomorrow and you have to pay your own bills. What you do is you slowly build them up. You slowly give them more and more responsibility with the goal being that when they leave, they know how to take care of themselves you know, as much as they can from, you know, it, it's hard to replace actually getting out into the world and taking care of yourself, you know, but in terms of like, okay, well, they know how to cook some basic food, they know how to do their laundry, they understand that, you know, if you don't take out the garbage today, uh, it's going to be sitting here for a week, and it's going to stink up the house like that, that sort of stuff that like, you need to, to still into your, ch- into your children during their teenage years, so that they're prepared to be an adult. Uh, but there is, that point where we lose our vulnerability, it normally happens in our teenage years. Now, we might we might gain consciousness as a child. Like, I gained consciousness when I was by seven or eight, meaning I realized that I was going to die and understood that in some, in some minor way. Again, it's not like, you, know, you, you can't point to you becoming an adult at one point in time in the same way you can't point to you gaining consciousness at, at one point in time. But in, in the teenage years, there tends to be like, in terms of, betrayal that tends to be where you first experience it somewhere there you know so maybe you have like your first boyfriend maybe you have your first girlfriend and we think that we are so in love and we'll be together forever we're romeo and juliet you know we're those two people off the notebook that i can't remember their names because i didn't watch the notebook in a very long time um i did watch it when i was younger by the way i don't want to i don't want to lie to you i did watch it but uh (laughs) i don't remember their names anyways we romanticize our relationships uh, especially our first ones, you know, because it's so new and we've never felt this way before. So in love, you know, of course, we're going to get married. We're going to have children. And then they cheat on us. And that hurts and probably makes you a little bit bitter, right? Like if that's the first time and everyone has to have a first time of something, if it's the first time something like that has happened to you at all, it's going to really sting in the same way that you falling in love with the person was really special and it felt really good when you actually be betrayed for the first time and you get hurt that's going to hurt a lot and so it's no wonder teenagers are so emotional all the time the hormones alone don't help but given the things that they have to experience for the first time it's like of course they're going to be pissed off that their boyfriend girlfriend cheated on them you know they they literally thought they were fully in love Adults are a little bit less naive in that sense. They recognize that, well, you know, gonna trust people. I'm gonna get more on, more in detail on this later. But so what I want to say just now is that adults understand that um, that you know people cheat. It happens, uh, and so they're not as naive in that particular sense. So what then? Well, then you. <laughs> Then you see your friend who has a boyfriend who has a girlfriend and they're so in love and they're saying they're we're Romeo and Juliet and we are the people from the notebook and 
you say to them, well, you know, they're going to cheat on you. Don't be so don't be so naive. What are you talking about? They're, of course, they're going to cheat on you. True love doesn't exist. It's like, okay, well, if you can sum up bitterness in one sentence, it would be something like true love doesn't exist, right? But you know, you you are bitter now when you're angry for being cheated on and you recognize that you are vulnerable when you get into a relationship because the person could very well cheat on you and hurt you. And so you're, you know, you, you have this friend that's seemingly happy and you just want to be like, hey, listen, girl, I felt the same way you did, but guess what? They're going to cheat. It's going to happen. Don't be so naive. Grow up, you know? Uh, and so what, what do you do? Well, you start putting up walls. You can see that. Over time, as we mature, we inevitably have more experiences like this. Like, again, to get back to when we're, chill, when we're a child, we're innocent, and we haven't had any chance to do anything bad. In the same way, when we're a child, we also haven't, we, we haven't had any opportunity for us to be betrayed. And so as you get older, of course, you're going to have more times when you're betrayed. Now, what do a lot of people do? They start putting up walls. You know, they start putting up walls. And maybe you're lucky and you've never been cheated on. But, you know, this consciousness of one's vulnerability can come out in so many different ways. You know, it's not just through, um, it's not just through cheating and fidelity. Um, here's another example. Let's say you trusted a coworker. You share this wonderful idea you have. You're not really sure about it. You're a little nervous to tell the boss. So you say, hey, listen, come over here. Like I got to tell you about this little idea I have. And you tell the idea and your coworkers are listening. He says, yeah, that, that sounds like a great idea. I think you should go to the boss with that. And guess what? Okay, I'm going to go to the boss with it, but I want to do it right. So you spend the next couple days, you plan and you plan. And then in the next meeting, the boss says, oh, so... You know, Sally came up the other, day, the other day in my office and told me this great idea and we're going to implement it. You've been betrayed. They took your idea. What the hell, Sally? I don't like you anymore. So what happens? Well, you become a little bit more bitter and you start putting up walls and you start saying, you know what? The next time I have an idea, I'm not going to tell Sally. In fact, I might not tell anyone ever again. You know, there's so many examples of this. The point of that story is that there's more than one way of being hurts, not just through relation. I mean, it's always through relationships, generally speaking, because people hurt each other, but not through necessarily romantic relationships. And so you put up walls, right? You put up all these walls around you because you don't want to share information. You're afraid of, you know, you're vulnerable and you're afraid you're going to get hurt. Uh, Tom Petty actually has this wonderful quote, uh, wonderful lyric in his song. It's called Walls, interestingly enough. And he said, and I quote, all around your island, there's a barricade. It keeps out the danger, dot, 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 dot. I'm going to finish that lyric in a sentence, in a, sen <laughs> in a second. Um, but that's true, right? Like, he's absolutely right there. Walls do keep out the danger. If you put up walls, you're not as vulnerable anymore. I mean, obviously, in the old castle days, if you put up a wall, people ain't getting in, right? But that's not the end of the lyric. Tom Petty said, all around your island, there is a barricade. It keeps out the danger, but holds in the pain. Now, that's the downside of walls. You see, walls keep the toxicity inside. It eats you up. It's literally bitterness at its finest. You know, when people say, don't be naive. Of course, l true love doesn't exist. Everybody cheats. Like, that's bitterness. That's 100% that's bitterness. So what do we do about that? What do we do about that? Well, we have... Two things. We have, we're, chi we're children and we're naive. And we're just going to get hurt and taken advantage of. So what do you do? If, well, you got to put up walls, right? Of course you put up walls. And of course you become bitter. And of course you say, oh, no, no. True love doesn't exist. Friendship doesn't exist. All this stuff is just garbage. Everyone's going to betray you. No one's your friend, blah, 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 blah. Well, is that the best place to stop? No. There's actually another level. There's another progression shall we say. See, many people think that if you are voluntarily vulnerable, that you are naive. I'm going to say that again. People think that if you are voluntarily vulnerable, that you are naive. But that's not necessarily true. The progression I talked about earlier. You start off, you're young, you're innocent, you're naive. And then you get, you become more conscious you get hurt a couple times, and now you're experienced, and now you're bitter. But the path doesn't stop there. It does for a lot of people. And those people are bitter, resentful, angry people. You don't want to be that person. 
there's something beyond that. And that is transcending the naivety. What does that look like? It means being vulnerable voluntarily. Being vulnerable voluntarily, knowing bloody well that there's the potential for you to get hurt. You know, some think that vulnerability is a form of weakness, right? People say, okay, well, it's okay to be weak sometimes and let people understand you. It's like, no, 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 wait, wait a minute. Being vulnerable is not weak. Being vulnerable is not a form of weakness. Vulnerability comes from a place of strength, of courage. Courage being one of the four virtues of Stoicism. Vulnerability is, listen, I know that if I put down my walls, there's the potential that you're going to come in and make me hurt. But I am going to choose to believe the best in you. I am going to choose to let you in. And if you hurt me, I'm strong enough to recover. But I'm going to assume you mean well for me because I mean well for you. Now, am I saying that you should let a stranger into your house with a knife? Of course not. That's being naive. And I don't think people should be naive. I don't think if you are in a relationship with someone and they're not sleeping at your house at night that you should say, oh, well, they're clearly they're not cheating on me. It's like, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. That's naivety. But I also don't think that people should be bitter. I also don't think people should put up walls about being hurt in the past and just assume that everyone's going to hurt you because that's not the last point of progress. There's naivety, which is your child. There's bitterness, which, okay, you're becoming an adult. You're getting a little bitter. But there's something beyond that. You can transcend that. You can be willing to trust again. You can be willing to put your walls down, knowing full well that there's the potential for being betrayed again. But you're doing it anyway because you want to believe that the person in front of you is just like you, just flawed yet growing. You're choosing to trust because you believe that there's some good in the world and that it's really worth fighting for and it's worth suffering for. And if you have to suffer a little bit every now and then to make the good in the world come out, it's worth it. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope it was a meaningful episode for you. If you want to support me, man, listen. Share this episode with a friend. Share this podcast with a friend. It's the best way to support me. Uh, lots of other things you can do, though. You can check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitters, YouTubes, all the social medias, Patreon. I have a Patreon as well. Um, I also have transcripts. I never mentioned this, but I actually fully transcribe my podcasts. So if you know anyone that like um, can't, like they they're deaf, they don't they can't hear. Uh, check that out on on my uh, RSS feed, uh, Buzzsprout. Uh, you can uh, you can find it there. Transcriptions. Uh, and I'm going to thank you again one more time. Thanks again for listening. Cheers. Until next time. <laughs>